Well, here we are for geography. We're on Unit 7, Southwest Asia. If you want to open your book to 474, you can look at this. Uh, this region is known for uh, certainly the oil that it has, lots of desert, and there's many political problems in the region. Looking at page 478, you can again see the, the size of the area like we usually look at, the population. Compared to the United States, again, it's multiple countries, but a little bit more than what we have. There's the, the Sahara Desert we talked about previously. Uh, the Rubel Kali is in the Arabian Peninsula. That's a good sized desert. Uh, mountains. We're not quite to Mount Everest yet, but uh, there's a couple in this region that are pretty good sized. You can see the physical map. Over on 481, the, the political map, uh, there will be a map available um, if you can print that off. And certainly labeling would be most important, maybe not too much worried about coloring. If you do, just outline would be fine. And if not, uh, we'll work something out. So I want to talk about our first page of notes today. There are a total of three. So I would suggest maybe writing the notes down first, then watch this, and you can write down any information that I have extra if you would like. So it's Unit 7, Southwest Asia, and it's chapters 21 through 23. So this looks like the area. Um, this would be Africa over here. Again, it's called Southwest Asia because this technically is part of the Asian continent. We typically refer to it, though, as the Middle East. And you can see the countries, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Iran and Iraq, some that we've heard about in the news lately. One country that's uh, quite interesting, especially the city, is over here in uh, the United Arab Emirates, and it's called Dubai. I'll have some other pictures to show you about that. So one thing they've done in Dubai is they've actually gone out into the water and put rocks and boulders down and then built up this area and they've created these palm cities. There's one, two, three of those where everybody that lives on these actually lives on the coast because they have these palms and there's houses and they all face the beach. Um, crescent shape here. Here's an island area. Looks like the world. And so again, they have a lot of money and they're able to go out and do this. There's a close-up of one of the Palm Cities, what that looks like. I think that's just a drawing. And this is an actual picture of one being built. You can see the major roads that go out. This would be the trunk of the Palm City. And then out farther are the, the Palm Fronds where the people are living. And this is a, one of the palm fronds, so you can see each house faces the water, so everybody lives on the beach. Be pretty cool, probably costs a lot. Some more there. There's the island one. So we'll start with chapter 21, Physical Geography, Southwest Asia. Oh, and we'll go to 13, it looks like. So the Arabian Peninsula is the most distinctive Landform in Southwest Asia, bordered by the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, so it's right here. Here's Persian Gulf, Red Sea there. And then the Anatolian Peninsula is occupied by Turkey, and it's the beginning, so this would be up here. This is the bottom portion of that peninsula. And so this is the beginning of the Asian continent. <clears throat> Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea are linked by the Suez Canal, so this is Egypt. And the Suez Canal comes through here. Mediterranean Sea would be up here and allows ships to travel from Europe through the canal and on over into India and the, the rest of Asia. Linking the Mediterranean and the Black Sea are the Bosporus and the Dardanelles. Um, and between them is the Sea of Marmara. So here's the Dardanelles and there's the, the Bosporus up there. So going from the Arabian Sea to the Persian Gulf is a narrow passageway, and it's called the Strait of Hormuz. So you can see the countries, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia here. Here's the United Arab Emirates. 
and then they go around that little tip. So a very important strategic location because of, uh, of where it's at. If you control that, you control the flow of oil out of that region. A wadi is a riverbed that remains dry except during the rainy season. And you can see this wadi here, okay? There's a, there's a dry riverbed. And so that's what a wadi is, is this riverbed and it remains dry until the rainy season. Then it, of course, has water in it. <clears throat> Some of the mountains for the region. We have the Hindu Kush that are found in Afghanistan. Also the Zagros and the Elbers, those are found in the country of Turkey, or Iran, sorry, and then Taurus in the country of Turkey. And an uh, important waterway, we have the Tigris and Euphrates rivers that helped create an area known as Mesopotamia. So here's the Mediterranean Sea, Persian Gulf over here, Red Sea here. Uh, the rivers travel this direction Here's Mesopotamia. It's also known as the Fertile Crescent, something we talk about in world history. Um, and they, those two rivers come together to form what is called the Shat al Arab. A really interesting story. At one point, uh, there was a city that was right on the coast of the of the of the uh, of the Persian Gulf. But over time, as these two rivers have emptied into the Persian Gulf, silt has built up, and that city is now 75 miles from the water. So that's, it's built up over that time. The Dead Sea is the lowest place on Earth at 1,349 feet. So the banks of the Dead Sea is that far below sea level. Um, and the Dead Sea is also a landlocked salt lake. You can see that you can, could actually float in it, much like the Great Salt Lake here in Utah. About 50% of the world's known oil reserves can be found in this region. Also large amounts of coal, copper, potash, and phosphate. Phosphate's usually used in fertilizers. So this, this area controls a lot of that oil. Oil, petroleum, different names for it. Crude oil is another one. And they're usually transported by these huge tanker ships. Okay, the Rubal Kali, or empty quarter, about 250,000 square miles. Again, by comparison, Utah has 86,000 square miles. Anyway, it is the largest area of sand in the region. So a lot of areas where it's just sand. And Oasis, again, we may have talked about this, place in the desert where the underground water comes to the surface. And certainly, like Africa, these, this region of the world has those. <clears throat> um, drip irrigation, this is an important one. Uh, water is very, very valuable in this region. It's a scarce commodity because it's so dry. Um, it's so important, so they have to really be careful Obviously, they need to grow crops, and so this is a very smart way of doing it. Uh, each plant would have just a little bit of water being dripped continually onto the plant. So, you know, in summertime when we have a garden, sometimes people will just let water run down the furrow. We have enough water that we can do that. Uh, they can't do that in that region. So having drip irrigation is a very smart way to do that. Um, because water is such a scarce commodity, they're also turning to desalination, which is the removal of salt from ocean water. And it's quite, a, quite an involved process, um, but it is very expensive. But since they have the oil, they, they can use that money towards this project of, of desalination. Um, Okay, so crude oil, petroleum that has not been processed. So once it's taken out of the ground through pipelines onto these ships, then it goes to a refinery, and that's a place to convert the crude oil into useful products. Uh, again, some of the most obvious, gasoline, diesel, uh, but there's many other products, medicines, um, uh, plastics. So if anybody has 
a milk jug at home, you're writing with a plastic pen, okay, those all come from crude oil. So they're, they're very important products. And the price fluctuates, again, depending on issues around the world, but, okay. So that's the notes for today. Just a couple of other pictures. So this is a water park that's also found in Dubai. Uh, pretty elaborate, again, they have the money to spend on it. Um, the world's tallest building is found in this region. It's the, uh, the, the Burj Dubai, Burj Khalifa. Um, anyway, just compared with some other buildings there. And this is a, a picture of it by itself. And this picture here, this worker is on top of the building, probably that little metal spire that's at the very top. And you can see how far um, above the ground they are. So there's two more pages of notes. Um, I will have an assignment for you and we'll see you next time.